Well, William, you've just co-published a book with Matt Hatton about Internet of Things and why it never seems to have reached, or so far anyway, the massive claims uh, made for it in the early days, 50 billion installed devices. Um, were these targets ever realistic? Why weren't they met? Why well, will they be met? Perhaps you can share some of your thoughts with us. Yeah, sure. So um, if we go back to 2010, Ericsson and Cisco set out with quite a lot of hype their predictions that by 2020, we would have 50 billion connected devices. Well, we're in 2020 now. So how many do we have? Now, it's quite difficult to count because unlike cellular subscriptions where the mobile operators keep tabs of how many subscribers they have, a lot of these devices are just things, transmitters, smart speakers, whatever, that are sold by a huge range of players and end up in people's homes and offices or elsewhere. So it's much harder to know and it depends exactly what you count as well. So would you include, for example, wearables in the Internet of Things or are they more a cellular kind of device? But our best estimate is that we're in about eight or nine billion connected devices at the moment. No, that's not bad. That's a large number, but it's still less than 20% of the predictions that were made back in 2010. So what went wrong? Why, why are we only at 20% or less? And you know, our take looking back is that actually we assumed back in 2010, it was going to be a simple process to sell these devices, just like it's a simple process to sell a cellular handset. You just advertise it. People turn up at the Apple store, they take it home, they put a SIM card in, it registers on the network and they start using it. But that doesn't really work with an Internet of Things device. You can't just put a, a cow collar into a, a store and expect the cows to trot up and put the collar on. Right. There's a lot more to it than that. You need to develop a complete solution for the farmer or whoever. You need to help them implement it. You need to make it deliver productivity gains. You need to have all sorts of case studies. It's a lot more difficult than we originally thought. And I think that's the key reason why we're only at about 20% of the expected level of devices at this point. So where or when did it start to go wrong? Yeah, so I'm not sure it necessarily went, ever went wrong so much as it didn't quite go right. <laughs> so it's worth remembering back in 2010, we actually still already had Internet of Things. We had what was then known often as machine to machine or similar. And these were all sorts of devices that have been used for many years sometimes, connecting up remote reservoirs and all that sort of thing. And we've still got that. And as I've said, we've had some growth in the marketplace. So it's not that something has gone badly wrong and the service has collapsed, but we just didn't get that really vibrant pickup that we hoped we might get. And I think that that started to go wrong, or at least not to go right, way back at the start, when we assumed that if we just threw a lot of technology at the issue, a lot of startups, a lot of new ideas, that the whole thing would just magically take off. And we didn't think more systematically about the, the overall solution that was going to be needed. Okay, well, that's all the history. Would you say the path to global IoT ubiquity is clear now? So I think it's clear in so much as we can know the big steps, but that's a bit like saying the path to resolving climate change is clear. We just need to replace all those nasty old <laughs> oil and gas fire power stations with renewables, and we need to replace all those nasty old cars with electric cars. And you know, it's easy to say these kind of things, but obviously very hard to do it. And in the world of Internet of Things, it's easy to say, well, actually, we just need to deliver complete solutions. We need to deliver that in a way that helps organizations embrace those solutions and change their working practices and their staff and their skill sets to, to meet that. And we need to do it in a way that delivers value throughout the value chain to all the different players so that everyone makes a good profit from it. So, you know, these things are all very easy to say and, and it's what we need to do. But how do we actually go about doing it? I think that's still very unclear and very difficult to understand at this point in time. Well, do you think the players in the ecosystem, the, the IoT industry itself, are, are up for it? Are they ready for it? So that's an interesting question because it seems to me that, that it's difficult to, to identify who the players really are. So unlike, let's say, the automotive world where you can pick your top 10 car manufacturers or even the cellular environment where you can say, well, it's Ericsson, Nokia, Huawei and Apple and Samsung, the IoT space is a huge breadth of different companies from those that make chipsets to modules to wireless communication systems to 
um, system integrators to vertical experts um, to those who help companies transform and across the world and across a massive range of different sectors it's a really diverse range of entities and that I suspect is part of the problem it's very difficult to get all these people together in any way shape or form and get them to act collectively and so instead you get a very diffuse set of behaviors uh, and that makes it almost impossible to say that the industry as a whole can achieve anything instead it just needs to be brought about through the combination of all of the different market forces and that's that takes time of course to to for that to, to pass through the system well there's a lot of players out there doing a lot of different things do you feel that there's a need for iot to be standardized standardized maybe one standard for connectivity for example absolutely so what history tells us certainly in the world of wireless connectivity is that until you have a single dominant standard in each particular space then that space struggles very hard to take off to grow uh, and, and to deliver the economies of scale that we need and we see that in cellular we've got a single standard now developed by 3gpp with its various variants of 2g 3g 4g and so on we've got a single standard for home and office connectivity and wi-fi and we've got a single standard for personal area connectivity and bluetooth so looking across that it makes perfect sense that we should have and indeed would need to have a single standard of connectivity for iot devices as well and that makes it very easy then for device manufacturers to know which technology to put into their devices there's no doubt or debate it makes it easier to understand how we could get national networks deployed which would have a large number of devices on them and it makes it easier to develop the overall economies of scale through very large numbers so it seems to me that that's really important but it's not something we've been able to achieve in the last decade so seeing a path to it is really quite difficult and are you a betting man would you put your last 10 pounds on a gamble to say that the original forecasts would ever be met so i'm not really a betting man but i would bet on that because it's always seemed to me that 50 billion actually isn't a large number when you start to remember that there's about five or six billion cell phones out there. So it's only about 10 devices per cell phone or per person. And if I look at myself, I've got multiple devices on my bike and in my house and so on. I'm sure I've got more than 10. Now, of course, the developed world will always be ahead of the developing world and so on. But reaching 10 devices per person doesn't seem to me to be too much of a stretch so I'm, I'm pretty confident that we will hit 50 billion the question is when though so clearly we haven't done it in 2020 the author i work with matt hatton through his consulting company has come up recently with a forecast which looked towards 2030 and suggested we might get to about 29 billion by 2030 and that forecast seemed to me to be very reasonable mm. so that was suggest about 2035 for the 50 billion devices right um so a long way off yet 15 years so i would place that bet but i wouldn't expect to collect my winnings for quite some time well maybe we make a note in our diaries to revisit this in 15 years time and see where it got to um <laughs> sounds good thank you william um interesting as always and very good luck with the book the internet of things myth thank you vince great to talk to you